Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Aria and I just want to say thank you again for all of your support. We're getting closer to a thousand subscribers and I've been getting a lot of great feedback from all of you as well as some helpful tips. So thank you for that. And in this tutorial, we're going to be focusing mainly on hair dynamics, but since we're using the same process as we did with the character creation tutorial, I may gloss over a few things here or there. So if you need um, a little bit more in-depth description, you can go check out that other tutorial. All right, so here we go. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get some kind of base mesh. So you can use um, any one that you want, but I'm just using the Make Human app to create it. It's a quick and easy way to create a base model. And there's a lot of different options. You can see that I've already gone through and made some changes. Um, so you can do the same. And of course, there's all these different tabs here. And then once you've gone into these tabs, there's even these little subcategories here that you can um, click to decide which part of the body that you want to work on and you can go all the way down to um, Where is it here like eyes and things like that like everything that you want so you can really tweak this We're just gonna leave it at the base for now And then of course there's these tabs up here as well Geometries is if you want to add um, some clothing or stuff like that. We'll skip that for today Materials is where you can go to select skin type and the eye type as well then the other important thing I want to point out, um, you can go to the Pose and Animate tab here and if you make sure that you're on Skeleton, you can look over here and you'll see that it's set to none. But if we click on Default, you'll see that it's going to set up um, an entire rig for our mesh, which if you decide that you want to animate your character, this is going to save you a lot of time um, instead of having to rig it in Blender. Then once you have something that you're happy with, you can click on files here and then just make sure that you save your project just in case you want to come back and make some changes. And then of course, if we go to export here, let's choose this default option because that's the default for Blender. So that's probably going to give us the best result. And then we're just going to click the little dots here, find somewhere that you want to export onto your hard drive. And then right over here, there's this little button that you can click and it will export your mesh. Okay, so once you've got um, a mesh that you can use, just open Blender and delete everything that you see. We're going to go to File and Import. Click the um, file type that you're using. In our case, we're using the .dae here, so we'll click that. And then just go to where it's saved on your computer and you can hit Import. And you'll see here that if we hit the decimal key on our numpad, we can focus in on our mesh. Also, you'll notice in my animation that my character um, has clothing and that will be next week's tutorial, so stay tuned for that. But today we're just going to focus on creating the hair dynamics. And then just one more thing I want to point out, um, just the scale of my mesh here. If you did the same process as me, you should have no issues here. Um, but if you did bring in a a separate mesh it could be larger which will affect the simulation so maybe just make sure that um, if I click here you can see that um, these are my dimensions and everything is scaled to one so if yours is larger or smaller just make sure you scale it but scale everything not just the, the mesh so click here and then you can scale it um, and if you do that just make sure that you hit Control a and reset all of your transforms Okay, so now we want to just um, create a separate mesh for our uh, scalp here. So we're going to click on our base mesh, hit tab. And just before we do that, just hit A. And I always like to right click, make sure you're in vertex um, selection mode as well while you're doing this. Then right click and you can just hit smooth vertices and it'll just smooth out um, some of the rough edges that you have. You can also add a subdivision surface modifier to this but I would suggest um, leaving that all the way to the very end after you've done the simulation. Okay so click anywhere so that we unselect everything and you want to select this vertice here. Um, if you can be specific that would be helpful. This is the best one I've found and then we can hold control and hit plus and you can see that now we're growing our selection and we're going to go all the way till we're just um, going around the edge of the ear here and you can see now that we brought um, it out a bit too far onto the face. So if you hold shift and alt, you can click these here. Again, make sure you're in vertice mode. Um, if you're in edge select mode, it might not do the same thing. So we can just select these till it looks better. And then we just want to bring it up on the side as well. So again, hold shift and alt and just click here 
we can go to this side here, click these two, and then we're just going to go around to the other side here, shift alt and click there, and then we should be good to go. Okay, so now that we've got that, what we need to do is duplicate that. So we're going to hold shift and hit D, and then we're going to hit escape immediately. And now you can see if we click this arrow here, it hasn't really done anything yet. So what we need to do is select everything by hitting A. So we have all of our vertices. And then you can either hit P on your keyboard or right click and go to separate. And then we're going to go separate by loose parts. And now you can see there's a second mesh here. So if we hit tab to go back into object mode, you'll see now that we've got a separate mesh for our scalp. And if you want to make things a little bit easier for yourself, I like to name things just so I know um which things i'm clicking so do this if you want it's not required but it is helpful okay so now we're ready to add the particle system for the hair so make sure that you click on the scalp here and we're going to go over here to the particle properties and we're going to click this plus to add a particle system and then we can click hair and we're going to click advanced and we're just going to use one option from the advanced features which are basically velocity rotation and physics we're only going to be using velocity today so we'll make sure that that's clicked on let's change the hair length to something smaller like 0.6 so it's a little bit shorter and then we want to make sure we change our segments to something like 25 or 30 just so we get the hair um, the ability to bend properly. Okay, and then next we want to click hair dynamics And you can see that our hair went really funny. It's because we're not on frame one So just make sure that we're on frame one here So it's gonna look um, like it should at the default state there Then you can click this little arrow here and leave everything as default there Open collisions you can leave that as default, but just change this distance to zero it won't actually make it zero, but it'll make it the closest thing to zero, which will help us a lot. Otherwise, you could get a lot of glitches um, with this type of animation. And then we'll just skip cache for now until we're ready to bake. And we'll move on to velocity. And we just want to change the random to 0 0.01. And you can see when we do that now, um, not all the hair lengths are the same, which is going to look um, a little bit more natural. It won't look like a wall of... Um, hair. Then when we scroll down to render here, let's click off show emitter. We're going to click baseline and we're going to change these steps to six. You can change this to something a little higher if you've got um, a powerful computer and it will look a bit smoother when you render if you put it to something higher like eight. And then we're going to open viewport display here and change that to six as well just so we can see properly what we're doing. And then unselect show emitter and you can see that now we don't really see our scalp there which is what we want. And then click children interpolated and you can just leave this to 10 for now this is more just so we can see what we're doing but definitely when you render you're going to want to do something like 100 or 200 or something like that which will take longer i did 200 for mine but um it was probably a little bit too much so maybe 100 or 150 it, it all depends on what you want your hair to look like next we'll click long hair and this will just calculate better for the length of the hair open kink here and the final thing we want to do is add a wave. Let's change the amplitude to 0 0.02 to make it not so wild and we can leave everything else the same. Then finally open the hair shape and you can change this to 0 0.08 and we can change this to 0 0.03 just to give it a little bit more thickness at the end and it'll probably look better um, in the render. Okay so now that we've got that set up what we can do is we can actually shape our hair so make sure you've got a scalp selected and we're going to go over here and we'll go down to particle edit and you can see now that if we just click and drag um, we're starting to comb the hair but it's not really looking like it's 30 sections so what you want to do is just make sure you've got this selected here and that will just help us better visualize the segments and the last thing you to do is just make sure that you've got x-ray mode turn on otherwise you're going to run into a problem where you're not grabbing all of the hair now we can just zoom out by the way if you want to make your brush smaller or larger just hit f on your keyboard and then you can just drag in and out to change the size and as well if you hit shift f you can also change the strength Okay, so now we'll make sure that our brush is large enough to cover the whole head of hair and we're just going to click and drag all the way back here till it's facing straight back. And now I didn't do this in my other tutorial, but I just want to quickly um, go through what these other brushes do. So smooth um, is um, pretty self-explanatory if you've got like a little bump in your hair like that and you smooth it, you'll see that it kind of straightens it out. 
So you might want to do that after just to make sure everything's nice and smooth. And if you click the add button here, um, you'll see that if we click out here, it doesn't really do anything. It only works on the scalp itself. So you'll see if I click here, it's going to start adding new hair. So you can use this if you've got like a spot that's not as thick as you want it to be. But we'll just hit Control Z because we don't want that right now. Right here, this is the length, pretty self-explanatory. If you just click and drag, you can add length to your hair. And the puff brush is a little bit weird. You'll see that if I click and drag, it's kind of doing um, everything, which is kind of weird. So you can change the strength way down. And then if you click, you'll see that it, it will kind of just focus on one area. So you can puff up a certain area if you like. Next is the cut tool, which is pretty self-explanatory. If you just click anywhere, you'll see that it's cutting the hair. Obviously, um, that's probably not what you would want to do. So just make sure, again, you change the strength way down. And then if you make the brush a little bigger, you can just kind of thin out the hair a bit. If it's too thick, it's up to you for whatever look that you're going for. And the last thing is the weight here, which I would just leave just because it's going to work better for a simulation if you don't mess around with that. So let's just leave that for now. Okay, so once you're happy with the position of your hair, we can just click here and go back into object mode. And you'll see now that we've got um, some nice looking hair. And if we hit play, you see already that we've already got our simulation already going here. Um, it's not looking good because we forgot to turn our collisions on. So let's go back to frame one. And while we've got our scalp selected, let's go into the physics tab here. And we're going to click collisions. And we can change this to 0 0.015. I just found that this gives the best results for this specific simulation. Um, you might find that something else works for you. So select the base mesh and we can just add collision as well and we'll just change this to 0 0.15 and then we should be good to go. So if we hit play now, you'll see that it actually um, calculates the collision objects as well and it will fall properly. And you can see now that we've got our hair dynamics, it's actually looking a lot better than mine did in my animation. So that is clearly the advantage of doing these things more than once, you get better at it. So um, that's pretty much it. The only other thing I did obviously was create a scene. By the way, once you've got um, something that you're happy with, just make sure you go back to particles here, click on the scalp. And then just before we bake, what we want to do is I know that this simulation is going to be a bit funny with the hairs at the front. So you just want to change your pin goal strength to something like 0 0.002. And that way it'll just hold the hairs still really close to the scalp and it will let these ones fall. If you change it too high, it, I mean, you'll just get like a stiff head of hair to about here and then this will fall. So change it to 0 0.002 and that way it'll get rid of some of the glitches that you may experience, um, like the hair crashing through the collision objects and stuff like that. Um, and then that should be good. And then we'll just click bake and then I'll come back when it's finished baking. Okay, so I've done just about 80 frames or so just so we can see what it looks like. So if we hit play, now we can watch our simulation. And it's looking pretty good. Hopefully yours is um, acting properly. <laughs> Hopefully it's not doing anything funny. Um, just a couple things. If it is, um, if you've got kind of like flyaway hairs or if there's hairs crashing through, um, definitely try starting with the pin goal strength. That's the thing that I found very effective. I didn't really find um, changing the quality to help much. Um, but the one other thing that you can do is if you delete your bake, you can try changing the impulse clamping to something a little bit higher and it helps a little bit. Each simulation is going to be different. So um, unfortunately you just have to tweak with it, but hopefully you've got something that's looking um, roughly like what we've got here. I actually prefer this to the animation that I rendered. So hopefully yours is looking great as well. And of course in my animation you notice that my character has um, clothing on so we're going to leave that for today but we will do that in next week's tutorial. I'm also thinking about doing a background as well just to show you how I um, conceptualize um, different types of backgrounds. Um, and then the final thing that we can do is if we just go to shading here and turn on rendered view we can start adding a couple materials and some lighting. So let's first go to this world tab here. Click on this little circle and go to environment texture. Just find somewhere on your hard drive that has an HDRI. I got mine from hdrihaven.com and it's called Gym Entrance. I think I've used this one before, so you may have that already. Then once you found it on your computer, you can just click open. 
Okay, and then now we can start adding more our materials. So click on the base mesh here, and we're gonna add a new material. So let's just click to copy this, um, just so that we have a separate material for each thing that we're doing. And we can put the metallic all the way up to one, and we can just bring the roughness down to something lower, and that one is finished. The next thing we can do is click the eyes here. We wanna connect the alpha down to the alpha here. You can just move this out a little bit if you need to. Then just go to the materials tab here, go all the way down to the bottom and we're gonna change the blend mode to alpha hashed. And now you can see that we've got our eyeballs. Finally, we can click on the scalp here. We'll add a new material. And since I used cycles for my render, we're gonna just switch over to cycles here. Then we can hit shift A and this will only work if you are on cycles. So if you are on um, Eevee, you won't be able to find this specific node. If you are using Eevee, you can just use the principled um, shader here to create your look. But if you are using Cycles, this is a great little node here because it's basically just plug and go. And then you can change the color to anything that you that you want. And you can see that it's looking a little bit thin. So what you can do is if you go back to particles here and go to children, you can change this to something like 100 and then you'll see that it'll look um, a little bit more what it should look like in the render. And just wait for a second and it should load up and now it's looking really good. So um, the reason why we had to do um, so many hairs here is just because I chose to make my hair follicles pretty thin. If you don't want them that thin, you probably won't need as many um, of these children. But I really like the look of this hair, so we're going to leave it like it is. And now you can see that we've got um, a nice full head of hair with Dynamics. So now if we go back to layout, you can see that we've got our finished product here. So next week we're going to be creating the clothing for her, including a skirt that's got a simulation as well on it using cloth and a cylinder. So that's going to be pretty cool. And then in the next tutorial, I'll show you how I create the environments for my characters. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you next time. Okay, bye!